All right, so here's something I'm surprised I haven't made a video on yet. A fingerprint reader from Microsoft that was released back in the mid-2000s. Yeah, yeah, I know, big deal, right? It seems like every business laptop from back then had one of these things built in, so who really cares? Well, this thing was actually made for home users, and more than that, it's got Microsoft's branding on it, so you know it must be good, right? Right? Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So I gotta thank yet another late night eBay purchase for making this one possible. Uh, I picked this thing up not too long ago, brand new in the box as you can see, and it also came out of the Microsoft company store, which I think is super cool. I always love to see this sticker on things. But yeah, this thing sold back in 2004 for a price of $35, and it was compatible with Windows XP and later Windows Vista, but only the 32-bit release release of both of those systems. Uh, however, there was a 64-bit compatible patch that was released by a third-party person or group of people a little bit later on, so that's neat. And yeah, this thing advertised itself as an easy and convenient password replacement that could be used to log into your Windows user account and also log into websites. Though it was only compatible with Internet Explorer as well as Firefox, believe it or not, with a third-party add-on called Fingerfox. Now, you might think like, wow, this sounds like a really cool secure way to replace your passwords and well you'd be wrong because this thing actually sucks as a security product because the reader does not encrypt your fingerprint data when it sends it to the computer and as pointed out by an independent researcher who published a write-up on this thing back then someone with the right tools could actually intercept the fingerprint scans and use a replay attack to get access to the accounts that you would log into with this thing now they would need to have physical access to your computer to install a usb sniffer to actually be able to do that but that's still a pretty significant security flaw and that's probably why microsoft specifically marketed this thing purely for convenience and not as a security product and they even flat out say on the back here that the microsoft fingerprint reader should not be used for protecting sensitive data like financial information or for accessing corporate networks and they elaborate on this a little bit further in the help documentation for the software that goes with this thing where they flat out basically say that yeah you should still use a password for anything sensitive because this thing's not going to secure your accounts at all. And that's why, like I said, this was a convenience product. It was made for people who just wanted an easy way to, you know, be able to log into their Windows account on a computer at home, or, you know, you could maybe tie it to your Webkins account, I don't know, something like that. But uh, yeah, we're going to be opening this thing up today for the first time, and we'll uh, see, you know, what it's capable of and how it works. I think we can just uh, grab this here. Maybe I am going to have to get my uh, my box cutter here. I really wanted to try to keep this package uh, as intact as possible. All right, I think that's probably the best we can do with this. So we'll set the plastic prison aside and we'll uh, take a look at uh, what we got here. So yeah, here's the fingerprint reader itself. And we should uh, in the back here have like yeah our getting started guide. We've got our software disk. I'll have to see if this has been archived. If not, I will certainly do that. And then uh, yeah, that that is basically everything. This thing uh, does connect via USB. So there's that. Though they do tell you to install the software first before connecting this, I assume. Getting started, guy. We'll take a brief look at this. We'll see how many pages this is. Uh, it is 10 pages. So yeah, not uh, not a really long guide at all. And yeah, right here they also say to install the software first. Now Microsoft did license the technology in this thing from a company called Digital Persona, and so they use their password manager software with this. I believe this is actually based on a uh, hardware product from Digital Persona, just you know slightly modified and with Microsoft branding on it. Uh, and yeah, so it tells you, I mean, we'll, we'll probably refer back to this, how to register a fingerprint, how to log onto a website, login manager, and then you got your product info and all that. So yeah, uh, it should be pretty straightforward, I would imagine. So let's go ahead and uh, switch over to the Windows XP computer, get this installed and see how this thing works. All right, so here we are on a lovely fresh install of Windows XP, and we're just gonna pop in the driver disk here. All right, so it looks like it's not even branded as the Microsoft Password Manager or anything. It's just called Digital Persona Password Manager 1.0.1. So we'll accept that agreement. And here is this disclaimer about this not being a security product once again. And they tell you actually uh, how to make a strong password. 
I just find that really funny. I mean, I know it's not a security product, but it's funny how like, because, you know, you just associate fingerprint readers with being like, a, oh, it's a, you know, secure way to log into your system or, you know, do whatever. It's just funny seeing how they like have to say so many times that it's not. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to install that. And now is the part where we connect our fingerprint reader to the computer. So we're going to get rid of that cable tie and we'll get rid of this thing here. Oh, and it has to go into a rectangular USB port, not one of those, you know, spherical or triangular ones. All right, all right, give me a second. All right, we got the device installed and ready to use pop up. Okay, so it looks like we have to restart and then the registration wizard is gonna come up. And it also says right here that if your product package contains the Microsoft IntelliType Pro or IntelliPoint CD, insert that CD and install that software. And that's because Microsoft actually sold multiple models of these fingerprint readers. They had one that came included with a mouse. It was not built into it, but it was like a separate you know, thing. And then they did have one built into one of their keyboards. And check that out right here on the welcome screen. Of course, it's just going to log in automatically for us. But that right there is the little uh, icon that lets you know that the fingerprint reader is uh, set up and working and you could use it to log into your account. And when you do log in, it's going to come up with the fingerprint registration wizard. So we're just going to run through this and it lets us know that our Windows account is not password protected. So we do need to uh, do that. So let me just uh, close out of this and quickly go in and apply a password. So we'll go in here, we'll add a super secure password here. And then we're gonna make a couple other user accounts here uh, because one of the neat things, at least if I'm reading this uh, instruction manual right, uh, one of the neat things that you can do is, you know, if you had this thing, you know, plugged into like a shared computer, um, you could have each user associate a fingerprint with it. And then on the login screen, all you would have to do is press their finger to the reader and it would automatically log into their account. Uh, so we do have to actually add passwords to uh, these accounts. I'm just going to use the same password for everything, you know, because that sounds like a great idea. And we'll change the uh, picture as well, maybe to this one. We got three accounts. We'll go back into the fingerprint reader uh, setup wizard here or the registration wizard. And now we have to enter our Windows password. So we'll do that. And then you have to select a finger you want to associate. So I'm just going to use my uh, left index finger. So we'll select that. And then we have to uh, hold your left index finger on the fingerprint reader until the screen indicates that the scan is successful. So we'll try that. There we go. And so this is very similar to like, you know, touch IDs setup actually. Uh, just the way that it works where you have to like kind of do it multiple times. And now it's been registered. So if we hit next, um, okay, it wants you to register at least two fingerprints. Okay, so maybe we'll do the other index finger as well. And I'm actually not going to do that for the other user accounts because I, you know, I only have so many fingers. So I'm just going to do maybe like my left middle finger and, you know, my left thumb or something for the other two accounts. Uh, that way we could actually demo the, you know, separate login functionality. So now if we touch the fingerprint reader with any registered finger, it will display the one touch menu so you can access the digital persona password manager program. So we'll do that. And there we go. So it shows up with my user account name. We can create a fingerprint login. Okay. So we would have to actually be at a login screen to do that. So we'll try to open up Internet Explorer and go to one in a moment. But you can also, uh, I think just if you hit properties here, or no, can you only get access to this menu when you, uh, interesting. I think you can only get access to that menu when you hold your uh, fingerprint to the reader. So then that comes up and you can get to properties here as well. Now, the only problem with demoing the Internet Explorer login saving functionality is that IE6 here is not going to be able to access any modern website to display a, you know, username and password box. So uh, what I've done is I've thrown together a little HTML document that just has a basic username and password uh, box here. And by threw together, I mean, I just looked up somebody else's HTML and just made some slight modifications to it. So I'll have the link down below of where I actually got this from. But yeah, what I can do from this screen here is just touch my left index finger to the scanner and it will come up with this form that asks me to enter in my username and password and, you know, what button you actually click on to log in. So I could choose maybe MJD. MJD is the password. You can also choose additional fields if they didn't show up in here. And you see as I like highlight over that, the, you know, field on the web page here highlights as well. So that's nice. 
And yeah, so we'll hit OK. And you see up here, we get this little icon that says login with your fingerprint. And this is where you can just, you know, change those settings if you want to. But I should be able just to touch my finger to the fingerprint reader and it will log in. You can see up here in the um, address bar, it added uh, first equals MJD, password equals MJD. Again, this is a very insecure login form just purely for this uh, demo here. But yes, this means that it did work. It did actually input my username and password. So yeah, that's how that works. And now if I were to be on the desktop and I were to touch my finger to the scanner again, under quick links here, you see I've got that HTML login form. So this just will populate with sites as you, you know, associate your fingerprint with with them so yeah that's really nice so I can do that and um, I think we will uh, yeah so it's not gonna automatically log in for you just from clicking it from there so you do have to do the fingerprint reader again and then it will you know put in your username and password now what I'm gonna do is log off and we'll actually just uh, switch user and instead of logging back on with my password I can just again touch my fingerprint to the reader and it will automatically log me in so now what I'm gonna do is switch to uh, these other user accounts. And now I'm gonna run through the registration wizard again and associate a different fingerprint of mine with these two other accounts. So we've got all that configured and I've associated my left thumb with the Eddie Trustman account. So if I touch that to the reader, it will log into that account. So there we go. If I go to the start menu, see we are under the Eddie Trustman username. And if I log back off or, you know, switch user again, I've associated my middle finger with the Dr. Breen account. So we'll uh, give Dr. Breen the middle finger there and we'll uh, log into that account. And there you go. Uh, what's even cooler is you don't even have to go back to the welcome screen to log into your account. So, you know, if I was logged into this account and somebody else came up to the computer when I was done with it and wanted to log into their account, all they'd have to do is touch their finger to the reader and it will automatically switch to that user account, which is super awesome. So yeah, you can just do this like as many times as you want here. So here's my Michael account. We'll switch back to the Eddie Trustman account and we'll switch to the Dr. Breen account once again. And sometimes it does take like, you know, you putting it on like a, a couple times for it to actually register your uh, fingerprint. Let me see right there, there we go. So this hands down is my favorite feature of this little device. And I think, you know, having this thing hooked up to a family computer where everybody had their own user account, being able to easily switch between those accounts at literally the press of a finger is extremely awesome. And strictly as a convenience product, for 35 bucks, I mean, it's honestly not too bad. I mean, if the fact that your fingerprint data was being sent to the computer unencrypted, you know, if that didn't bother you, and if you knew that this wasn't meant to be a security product and that it wasn't going to, you know, secure your logins or anything like that, I mean, this could very well be a uh, useful product for somebody. So um, yeah, there you have it. That is the Microsoft Fingerprint Reader in all of its glory. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, maybe consider becoming a patron or a channel member to get early access to these videos before anybody else. But either way, I just wanna thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.